So one of the things that's really neat about uh, this particular app, in addition to the, the client server component of it, is that you're building something with a user interface. You're building something that has a GUI. It has a UI. And real applications have a UI. Now, having a UI introduces a fair amount of complication um, because it turns out that determining how stuff looks and also how it reacts to user input is complicated. Um, and it's going to take us down a few rabbit holes. Uh, we're not going to go down too far. And in this walkthrough, I'm also going to lead you very close to some of the things that you'll need to be able to do in order to complete this empty checkpoint. Uh, so, so follow along carefully. So there's a couple of things I want to point out in this particular uh, walkthrough. I want to talk about why the app looks the way it does. And then I want to talk about how the app responds to various pieces of user input. Um, so on some level, any framework that um, interact with the user has to think about two things. First of all, how does the screen look, right? So I'm going to run the app here, um, get that going. And when it starts up, you'll see that it renders the UI in a particular way. And the question is why, you know, why does the UI look a particular way and not look some other way? And how do we control that? So that's one thing we're going to think about. The other question is what happens when I interact with the UI? How does the UI respond to various things like, for example, clicking on a button? or changing the input in a particular uh, search field or something like that, right? Uh, okay, um, so let's, uh, I'm gonna turn off my network example logging. Um, I'm waiting for the, the app to start up. Um, before we talked about the fact that the main activity .java is involved in this for the screen that's shown when the app starts up. But it's not the only part. Um, so if you, if you look through this, you can spend you know, and I would encourage you to go through this file carefully and try to understand what's in there and ask questions when you get stuck. But you're not going to understand why the UI looks a particular way. To understand that, we have to open up a different file. So again, I'm in the File uh, Explorer view. I'm going to go down to Res, and in Layout, there's something called Activity underscore Main. All right, I'm going to open this up. Now, Android Studio provides two different ways of working with this information. The one that will probably open by default for you is what's called the UI designer. And this allows you to interact with this in a way that allows you to kind of drag and drop components and stuff like this. Um, but for some people to do this, they prefer to actually look at the underlying code because this is also source code. It's a different type of code. This is something called XML. Um, and the idea here is that this code is why this screen looks this way. And you know, maybe you don't believe me, but let me try to prove it to you. So uh, first of all, one of the ways that we can demonstrate this is I'm gonna make a small change here and we'll see it reflected in the uh, app's UI. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a, uh, a text view um, and I'll use these defaults and then, um, is it content uh, text is equal to hello? And so what, I, and, and you know, this is gonna be highlighted, that's okay. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this button that says, uh, let's see, uh, apply changes and restart activity. Um, and I'm gonna wait for a minute while it um, runs again. Um, and so what I've done is what I'm expecting is that now my UI will have, once it updates, this small little hello text right at the top. Um, and there it is. So if you look over here, you'll see my little silly text is, is, uh, is shown. So there's clearly a relationship between what's in this and what's shown on the screen. Now, this is one of these places where this rabbit hole just goes like all the way to the center of the universe, uh, center of the earth. So we're not gonna go down it very far um, and we're not gonna expect you to do very much with this part of the app. But I wanted to show it to you uh, because there are components of it that you'll, that you'll need to understand. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this, this text view that I added. Um, and then let's see, if I just hit apply code changes, let's see if that's a little faster. Um, I think there's a way to kind of just update the UI without having to restart everything. So let's try that and see if it works. Uh, no, it didn't like that. Okay, so I'll hit apply changes and restart it. I'm learning about Android as I go too, uh, frequently all the time. It's just such a complicated beast. Okay, cool. All right, good. So now let's uh, let's go and look at what what else is in here. So this, so for example, this search bar is right here. Um, and so now what I want to talk about is that other part. So we talked a little bit about why things look the way they look, 
And we're going to talk more about that in a minute. But now what I want to, what I want to show you is why, what happens when certain, the user takes certain interactions. Because part of building an uh, interactive user application is responding to what the user does. And right now, this is one of the things that's not working about your app which is that when I put stuff in the search bar here, the, uh, the UI is not being updated. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is figure out how to connect this component of our UI to the code and main activity, right? So on some level, this activity really has two parts. It has this layout that's in the XML file, but then when the user starts to interact with it, usually what we wanna do is we actually wanna run code. So we wanna connect the layout to code in our Java file. So how is this done? So uh, what I wanna point out here is that these different parts of the layout have an ID. That ID is used to identify them in the code. When my main activity, so let me uh, hide the login here. When my main activity starts up, oh, these, these are okay, these are not uh, a problem. Um, when my main activity starts up, right down here, you'll see that it calls, um, binding.search.set on query text listener. So what is happening here? So first of all, we're using a library called Android Data Binding that simplifies the process of connecting these two parts of our app. Let me see if I can get these error messages to go away by just rebuilding the project and see if that works. Um, so that's so we're using this Android Data Binding library to, to, again, to help us connect the way the app looks and then the types of things it needs to do to respond to the user as the user is uh, interacting with it, okay? Um, and so when the app starts up, and I put some comments in here to try to kind of explain some of this and, and what's happening. When the app starts up, one of the things it wants to do is it wants to say, when the user changes the text in that search bar, I want to tell you that you should run a method. And that method is a method that you're going to have to work on as part of this checkpoint to respond to the changes that the user made. Okay, it didn't seem to like that. This is probably one of those times I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to go, eventually go all the way and do the, you know, uh, you know, clear cache and restart, but I don't wanna do that right now. So let's just ignore these errors. They're not, they're not a problem. Um, okay, so, well, let me actually just try rerunning the app. Maybe that will make it happy. Um, okay, so there are actually two methods that are associated with this. One is on query text submit, and the other one is this method on, to, on query text change. And so what I'm gonna suggest that we do is let's open this up. I'm gonna put some logging in here. So I'll do log.i uh, query, I'll use the tag query text, and I'll say, uh, I'll, just I'll just log the message that's being reported. Um, and so again, what I wanna show you is that when the text changes, we're going to see that our code is running by looking for this particular log message. Okay, so I'm gonna shut this down. I'm gonna restart it uh, from scratch. I'm gonna open up my log tag and I'm gonna look for query text. I'll wait for the app to restart. Okay. And now once the list is shown, I'll start typing in here. And you'll see that every time I change the contents of that text box, this method gets called. And the reason this method is being called is because of the code that I wrote up here. It's this line. If I remove this line, that method doesn't get called again. So it's this line of code that's connecting these two things together. It's connecting the search component in that layout that we looked at to code that's part of my main activity. And the goal is that now I can do whatever I want in this and you will have to change this. So uh, when your app is working properly, you will take the text that's been entered in the search bar and you'll use that to change the list of courses that's shown by the list view. So if I search for a particular thing, you should narrow down the list to only courses that match that particular thing, um, okay? And there's a little bit of information that you're gonna have to look at some other parts of of the code as well, right? So you'll see right here, when we set up the list the first time, there's this, uh, this line of code right here, and this is how we communicate with the code that's actually rendering the list to tell it to update the list of courses. Um, and, so, and so here, I'll, I'll do a sort of a, a silly example of that, right? Um, let's see here, I'll take this piece of code, and what I'll do is I'll say, if um, query.equals, blah, then I'm just going to um, 
think I have to do clear. Is there a clear method? Edit dot clear. Uh, remove all. There we go. Remove all. So this will just take. Uh, otherwise, what I'm going to do is um, what did this look like up here? Replace all. Yep. Replace all forces. Dot. Uh, um, and so essentially what I'm doing is I'm building in a little back door here. So if the user enters this special string blah, I'm going to have the course list actually vanish, right? I'll remove all the courses from it. If it's not blah, then I'll keep all the courses in there. So let's see if this works. This is just a fun little uh, test to see how this, how this is going to work. This is not what you're going to have to do to pass the test cases, um, but this is sort of a hint to help lead you in the right direction. There we go. So you see when it's blah, it's empty. Otherwise. I see stuff, right? So I add a blah. Okay, so a little hint to get you started with this part. Okay, the other thing I want to show you is why does, so the other question here, right? If I look at this layout, this really only tells me kind of the high level view of how different parts of the screen are displayed. But what it doesn't tell me is why does the course, why does each summary look the way it does? Why am I seeing the number? And to understand that, I have to look at this other file. So, um, and again, I don't want to go into you know too much detail here because I run the risk of, of really talking in you know too much depth about a part of the MP that is somewhat advanced. But we're using a library to render this list, and the way this works is it uses again this data binding library that we talked about. Each element here has access to a summary object. And it uses the name model to refer to that summary object. And so right down here, you'll see that the way, so the idea is that what I'm telling the library is how to render an individual summary. And right now, I'm using model.number. And that's why you see the course number displayed. Now, this is sort of like Jackson in the sense that it uses the getter convention. So uh, I should be able to use other fields from, um, from the, the model. And so let's try using the title instead. So I'm going to rerun this. It's going to think for a minute. And when it starts up again, what we're going to see is that instead of the number being shown, it's going to show the course title that's part of that summary object. And so one of the things that you'll need to do to pass the test suites is to change each element in this list so that it renders CS number colon title. And there are several different ways to do that. Um, that you can explore. Um, but this is a big hint in this direction. So I can put other things here, like I could do yo, um, and that would also, that, that warning is safe to ignore. Um, and so this is actually now going to combine these two pieces of information together, or it should, um, and we're gonna make a, a very sort of California cool version of our list where it says yo. Oh yeah, and then it doesn't like this. Okay, so. So there are some issues here, and, and you'll have to do a little Googling around or asking on the forum for us to, to, to sort of uh, lead you in the right direction here. But this is how you control what's displayed in that uh, for each item. Okay, so to sum up, um, when we think about why the app looks the way it looks, let me run it again because that's too weird. Um, there are two things. There's the layout, which is in this activity main.xml file, and that controls what's on the screen. And for those of you that have kind of a design bent, um, we may at some point give you a little bit of a chance to go deeper down this rabbit hole um, because building apps that are beautiful and usable is a real art as well as a science and it's difficult and it's you know something that um, you know you get good at by practice like anything else so we may give you a little bit of a chance to do that uh, later in the course but for now we're gonna move very gingerly here because there's a lot to think about um, however there are two parts to you know, the UI for an app. One is how it looks. The other part is what it does. And so what we've shown you here uh, very quickly is just this one way of establishing a connection between the UI components that are rendered on the display when you view the app and the code that's actually connected to those that responds to user actions. And this is something that we'll work with more as we go on. Um, right now, we're asking you to work with the, um, the you know, just the search component for this particular checkpoint, but in the future, we'll actually extend things so that when you click on the various courses, something happens and things like this. So this will get you started uh, with this app. 
Um, but this is a real, you know, deep uh, and very wonderful topic um, and something that uh, course staff are involved with and we'd love to talk to you about more. So if you're curious about these sorts of things, uh, please ask us and, and we'll be happy to tell you more.